earth movements and major landforms. The earth's surface is highly uneven and irregular. The surface of the earth is being shaped and reshaped by external agents like running water, wind, glaciers, etc. This is the reason why our present-day landforms are diverse and varied. What we see today on the surface of earth is the product of millions of years of geological change. Earlier, all the continents formed were single mass. However, under the influence of forces generated within the earth, they moved away in different directions. Such forces lead to slow earth movements and sudden earth movements which modify existing landforms. The forces which originate inside the earth and bring changes on the surface of the earth are known as endogenic forces. The forces which operate on the surface of the earth and bring changes on the surface are called exogenic forces. The endogenic forces try to uplift the earth's surface while exogenic forces try to level down the surface of the earth. Earth Movements The powerful endogenic forces operating from within the crust are also known as tectonic movements. Tectonic movements can be divided into two types. Sudden movements. They bring abrupt changes on the Earth's surface. Earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are the examples of these movements. Such changes can cause a part of the land to be fractured or the course of a river to be changed. Slow movements. Some changes in the Earth's crust are so slow that they take about hundreds of years to become noticeable. They are called slow changes. The Mahabalipuram temple, which now stands in the sea, is an example of this movement. Slow movements are further classified into vertical and horizontal movements. The vertical movements cause uplift or subsidence of the Earth's crust. When a part of the Earth's crust is thrown up by an internal force, it results in an uplift. The uplifted portion may become a plateau or a continent. In case of subsidence, a part of the Earth's crust may sink in comparison to the surrounding region and might give birth to a valley. Horizontal movements give birth to two forces, compression or pushing and tension or stretching. Such movements can cause folding and faulting of the crystal layers, thus creating mountains and rift valleys. Forces of compression These forces act on the rock strata from opposite directions due to which the rock layers are bent up or folded into a series of anticlines and synclines. These forces are responsible for the formation of fold mountains. The Himalayas, the Andes, the Alps, and the Rockies have been formed due to the forces of compression and are examples of fold mountains. Forces of tension These forces operate in opposite directions, thus causing a fault or fracture in the Earth's crust. The fractured rock strata either slides upwards or downwards along the fault line. The faulting then gives birth to new relief features like the rift valley, or a block mountain. If a block of land is uplifted between two parallel faults, then it looks like a huge mountain known as block mountain. If a block of land subsides between two parallel faults, a trench is thus created, which is known as rift valley. Major landforms. The landscape is being continuously worn away by two processes, weathering and erosion. Weathering is the breaking up of rocks on the earth's surface. Erosion is the weathering away of landscape by different agents like water, wind and ice. The eroded material is carried away and eventually deposited. The process of erosion and deposition creates different landforms on the surface of the earth. Work of a river When the river tumbles at steep angle over very hard rocks, or down a steep valley side, it forms a waterfall. As the river enters a plain, it twists and turns, forming large bends known as meanders. 
due to continuous erosion and deposition of the sides of meander. The ends of the meander loop come closer and closer. In due course of time, the meander loop cuts off from the river and also forms a cut-off lake, like an oxbow lake. At times, the river overflows its banks. This leads to the flooding of the neighboring areas. As it floods, it deposits layers of the fine soil and other material called sediments along its bank. This leads to the formation of a flat, fertile floodplain. The raised banks are called levees. As the river approaches the sea, the speed of the flowing water decreases and the river begins to break up into a number of streams called distributaries. Each distributary forms its own mouth. The collection of sediments from all the mouths forms a delta. Work of sea waves The erosion and the deposition of sea waves gives rise to the coastal landforms. Sea waves continuously strike at the rocks. As a result, cracks develop and become wider. Thus, hollow-like caves are formed on the rocks. They are called sea waves. As these cavities become bigger and enlarge, only the roof of the caves remain, thus forming sea arches. Further erosion breaks the roof and only walls are left. These wall-like features are called stacks. The steep rocky coast, rising almost vertically above the seawater, is called sea cliff. The sea waves deposit sediments along the shores forming beaches. Work of ice Glaciers are rivers of ice which do erode the landscape by bulldozing the soil and stones to expose the solid rock below. As the ice melts, the eroded surface gets filled up with water and become beautiful lakes in the mountains. The material carried by the glacier, such as rocks, sand and silt, gets deposited. These deposits form the glacial moraines. Work of Wind An active agent of erosion and deposition in the deserts is wind. Winds erode the lower section of the rock more than the upper section. Therefore, such rocks have narrow base and wider top. It lifts and transports sand from one place to another. When it stops blowing, the sand falls and gets deposited in low hill-like structures. These are called sand dunes. When the grains of sand are very fine, the wind can carry it over very large distances. When such sand is deposited in large areas, it is called loess. Volcanoes People generally think of a volcano as a mountain that ejects lava and flames of fire very often. However, volcanoes are openings in the Earth's crust through which materials are thrown out from the interior of the Earth. The material thrown out include hot molten rock or lava along with ash, some solid rock particles, steam and gas. The opening is called a wind around which a conical mountain may be formed. The funnel-shaped basin surrounding the wind is called as crater. A volcanic eruption along a linear crack called as fissure is called a fissure eruption. The whole process of ejection and solidification of lava is called volcanicity. So long as the hot liquid material of the volcano remains within the surface of the earth, it is called magma. But when this magma rises to the surface of the earth, it is called lava. The lava flow depends on its viscosity. The amount of silica and water in magma affects the viscosity of lava. High viscosity of lava is associated with greater amount of silica and less of water and vice versa. Kinds of volcanoes According to the nature and frequency of eruptions, volcanoes have been divided into three categories active volcanoes, dormant volcanoes, extinct volcanoes. Active volcanoes These volcanoes erupt frequently. There are more than 500 active volcanoes in the world. Most of them are found in a circular belt around the Pacific Ocean, called as the Ring of Fire. Example, Mount Etna in Italy. 
dormant volcanoes. These volcanoes have not erupted since a long time. They are also called sleeping volcanoes. They may erupt later, though they have not erupted since a long time. When they erupt, they can be very destructive. Example, Mount Vesuvius in Italy. Extinct volcanoes. These volcanoes are dead and inactive. There is virtually no movement. The peak of these mountains is now covered with ice. Example, Mount Kilimanjaro in East Africa. Earthquakes. An earthquake is a sudden and violent shaking of the Earth's surface, which usually originates from the interiors of the Earth. Most earthquakes are caused by the movements of the plates of the lithosphere. An earthquake usually lasts for only a few seconds, but may be violent enough to cause extensive damages to the life and property. The point at some depth below the Earth's surface where the vibrations of an earthquake begin is called the focus. From there, the vibrations begin to spread in all directions, much like the ripples caused by the dropping of a stone into a pool of water. The point on the Earth's surface that lies directly above the focus is called the epicenter. The vibrations reach this point first and then spread outward over the surface. Thus, the epicenter usually suffers the maximum destruction. Measuring Earthquakes The earthquake waves are recorded by an instrument called seismograph. The science of earthquake is called seismology. Seismologists are experts who study the pattern of earthquakes. The Richter scale, designed by an American seismologist, Charles Richter, is used to measure the magnitude of an earthquake. This scale has a range from 0 to 9. The higher the number on the scale, the greater is the magnitude and destruction. Earthquakes measuring above 6 on the scale are very destructive. Although earthquakes cannot be predicted, the impact can be minimized if we are prepared beforehand. Some common earthquake prediction methods adopted locally by people include studying animal behavior. Fish in the ponds get agitated and snakes come to the surface. Earthquakes are experienced in the same belts where volcanoes are situated. This is because the Earth's crust is very unstable in this region. Earthquakes do not create major landforms. However, they cause changes in the existing landforms. For example, they may cause cracks to open up in the ground. They may also lead to landslides or cause giant waves in the ocean called tsunami. Earthquake at Bhuj a case study. A powerful earthquake measuring about 7 on the Richter scale hit the Indian state of Gujarat on 26 January 2001. It caused great damage to the life and property, killing more than 20,000 people and destroying nearly 4 lakh houses. About 16 million people were directly or indirectly affected by the earthquake. The earthquake had its epicenter near Bhuj in Kutch. The region around Bhuj, therefore, suffered the maximum damage. Going by the previous records of earthquakes, the risk of violent and destructive earthquakes is very high in the Bhuj region. So, the rules for constructing earthquake-resistant buildings should have been strictly followed. This could have restricted the collapse of buildings, which is the main cause of deaths in an earthquake. Besides, the Bhuj region is very densely populated, which is another reason for the large number of deaths. In India, we have experienced many earthquakes in the Himalayan region. The Deccan Plateau has experienced some earthquakes of mild intensity and is considered relatively safe from earthquakes. Some destructive earthquakes that have rocked India are listed here. Trivia During the last ice age, Glaciers covered 32% of total land area. Presently, only 10% of land area is covered with glaciers. Trivia Glaciers store about 75% of the world's fresh water. In Washington alone, glaciers provide 470 billion gallons of water each summer. Trivia 
volcanoes can grow quickly. Although some of the volcanoes can take thousands of years to form, others can grow overnight. For example, the cinder coal volcano, Paracutan, appeared in a Mexican cornfield on February 20, 1943. Within a week, it was five-story tall and by the end of an year, it had grown to more than 336 meters tall. It ended its growth in 1952 at a height of 424 meters. By geology standards, that's pretty quick. Trivia Volcanic lightning occurs mostly within the cloud of ash during an eruption and is created by the friction of the ash rushing to the surface. Roughly 200 accounts of this lightning have been witnessed live. Trivia Parkfield, California is known as the earthquake capital of the world and has a bridge that spans two tectonic plates. Trivia Nearly 2000 years ago, a Chinese astronomer named Zhang Heng, CE 78 to 139, invented the world's first earthquake detector. Nearly 2000 years ago, a Chinese astronomer named Zhang Heng invented the world's first earthquake detector. It could detect earthquakes more than 370 miles, 600 kilometers away.